All right, we're on Elsa's page now. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so yeah, what I'll say about myself is that I was born and raised in Chicago. And uh, I am currently on a five month residency in Madrid. This is my first ever residency and my first time living outside of Chicago. So <laughs> um, let's see, I graduated in 2006 with a BFA and um, yeah, I've been lucky to be showing pretty consistently uh, since then. My overall concerns as an artist has always been uh, ecology, spirituality, and healing. And those three, those three concerns are kind of baked into uh, my practice because of, you know, to be quite honest with you, I was a very sickly child. And having that experience, uh, it takes you on this path where you're concerned with, with healing. And yeah, we'll get into how uh, probably growing up in Chicago being an unlikely source of inspiration for being a landscape painter, <laughs> but here we are. <laughs> being in a new place and uh, on a residency, yeah. how, do you, how do you feel like this uh, experience is kind of changing how you think about your work? I will say that being in Madrid specifically, um, there are so many good shows for painters here right now. And uh, to be honest with you, Chicago, uh, they're not big on painting in, in the art scene at large. It's just not a, a city for painters, I would say. And I, I've heard other people say that. So I'm, I feel recharged here that um, there is such a respect for the tradition of painting, like the idea that one could paint, you know, like just be an oil painter your entire life and you are still discovering new things about painting, where I feel like there's this, this very young idea about being like that paint, that doing one practice isn't enough. But I know that people have asked me, like, well, what else do you do? I'm like, okay, you paint. What else? Like, do you do performance art? Do you do sculpture? And there's this understanding here that, I don't know, that you could dedicate your whole life to a single craft and and it's still not enough. So I don't know, really appreciating that experience right now. Great. How does your relationship with the landscape kind of mm -hmm. manifest being from an urban area? I can say like right off the bat that uh, I, I've just had the good fortune that my apartment is really, uh, really near to El Retiro. It's, it's like this big, beautiful national park. And I have the opportunity to be like 15 minutes away from, you know, like this gorgeous little, it's like Central Park, essentially. And I keep sending messages to friends of just like these nature shots, you know, uh, because I understand how, uh, what, what the effect is on the human spirit to not have access to that kind of beauty. Right. And I think that that is my, my starting point as a landscape painter from Chicago is that like the understanding that, that not having that, it does damage to your sense of, of dignity it, on on the earth like not to be overly romantic about it but that's my that's my personal take on how important it is so uh, I'm having like this moment where I can feel the difference in my central nervous system to spend I've been here for about six weeks now and I can tell that like I'm sleeping better you know like I my breathing is more profound like without going to a yoga class you know what I mean like it's just walking in a place where where you can see something beautiful it does it a profound it just it affects you at every level so yeah I keep messaging my friends from Chicago I'm like everyone deserves to have like two months living outside of of a city where all you see are buildings like you need this for your your nervous system so I'll say that. 
can we i'd like to talk about this piece this is it's called night shore 21 can you just tell us uh where where this location is and maybe some thoughts about why some of the choices about the composition um color so unfortunately what you don't what you'll never see on a screen right is like this I have a, a relationship to shadow and darkness where every time that you see like black on my paintings it's never black it's always like alizarin crimson or prussian blue turquoise like layered on top of each other to create a very deep black and there are variations to that that darkness and um i like to talk about darkness in that way like that that darkness to me like on a spiritual level it's never uh, a void like darkness is is a living space like a a necessary energetic space so when i paint this night shore series it's not exactly for the purpose of of painting a seascape it's like a, a means to to talk about like that psychological spiritual space like a mythic space i'm always fundamentally after like trying to uh, to make images that allow us to to sit with something other than ourselves and nature is like the perfect setting for that like it's it's a an invitation into a relationship with something other than ourselves awesome um yeah i mean i really like I really like the whole thing. I mean, even though we can't see what you're talking about, the layers of paint, but I feel like there's a lot of, in the water, I see a lot of transparency. Mm -hmm. And having not seen this piece in person, I really like the idea of the the layers of paint you're talking about. Is It's not just transparent in the water, but that transparency is kind of comes through in the material. I can imagine that there's, you're kind of looking through these layers of paint in the top dark area and kind of feeling um, a cohesiveness between the water feeling and the paint application feeling on the top mm -hmm. um let's go i just want to go to this other landscape piece um this dark one another dark one um and is there is there a difference here in the in the location or execution that I think you you could probably see more clearly what I'm talking about in the like the the quality of darkness, like in the trees specifically. Like you could probably see that Prussian blue, that turquoise, right? Like it's not just a black and white branch against black. Like there's olive green, there's, you know, like all these luscious, deep like greens and blues and a magenta in there. I think it's a, you know, it's a very painterly kind of romantic uh, approach. Like it's, it's never just the image. Like I'm trying to create kind of a, an invitation, like a gentle inv invitation into, into the dark and, and beauty is uh, a means to doing that. Okay. Let's go ahead. And one of the areas that we were looking to discuss is the, um, is the controlled burn series yeah tell us about you know what these well first what are we what are we seeing and what are you thinking about when you're doing this and and the other thing we discussed is when you're when you're making paintings how how, how does the audience interpret what you're doing and what's the relationship between your intention the intention of the viewer so if you could um just kind of sure. talk about that relationship for sure so i feel like i have to justify first that that the image on here is very different like the color scheme on on the screen uh my work tends to be very i don't know like the color palette tends to be very almost pastel um very vibrant kind of pastel colors so I'll come back to that in a minute. But basically, I've been I've been painting a series of controlled burns 
uh, for a while now. Um, the very first image from this series was from 2009. And it was inspired by uh, just being a witness. Like I, I was a, I was fortunate enough to take a, like a school field trip as, as a child to see the after effects of a controlled burn. And I, I imagine that people who live close to the forest know exactly what I'm talking about. And this to me was a, a discovery, you know, being a, from the city. So walking upon a, like a burnt forest ground was really impactful, like to see ashen ground. And then for the, you know, our forest guide to, to explain to us that the process of a controlled burn is actually regenerative, that it was necessary, that it's a, it's a healthy practice for, for keeping the forest um, prosperous, I suppose. And I, I just loved that symbol. Uh, and to be honest, I, I needed that symbol. Like I needed to, it just became a companion, like that that metaphor, that, yeah, that metaphor came back home with me and it stayed with me. Like the idea, you know, not to, I don't like to talk about trauma, but coming from the type of neighborhood I was coming from where, you know, it was, it was a difficult, troubled neighborhood. So to have that metaphor that made me imagine that something that could look devastated on the surface, that that maybe some very necessary processes were taking place just beneath the surface, right? That something that could look devastated isn't necessarily so. And so, yeah, fast forward to 2009, and I did my first controlled burn painting, and I remember like, I don't know, I, I probably did two or three and I shared them with my very first gallerist and she was like, absolutely not. <laughs> like, I can't do anything with this. She's like, take this back home. So I did. <laughs> and then it became like my little private project. Like, um, you know, I, I had another gallery and, and the same thing happened then. They were just like, no, like we can't do anything with these. And it wasn't until a, like, um, kind of, he's not a, a critic, but he was like the closest thing to a critic that Chicago had at the time. His name was Paul Klein. And he happened to see them when I was showing them, uh, like I was showing them to a gallerist. They were on the gallery floor and Paul happened to see them on the floor and he wrote about them. And then that was the thing that kind of changed. It made me believe in the series, my own self, because I was so like, all right, my gallerists don't like this. Like, this will just be my little secret. So it encouraged me to, to, to pursue this series. But again, like I, I kind of pursued the series kind of for myself. And it wasn't until, uh, to be honest, 2020, it was the pandemic where people started talking about um, communal grief and the need for healing. And then there were the massive wildfires taking place at the same time. It was just like this really big kind of zeitgeist change I would say like it was just this everything coming together at once where people were interested in these themes and that was when uh yeah like a, a new gallery approached me and and they and they were interested they they knew exactly what I was trying to do there were now conversations around um you know indigenous land stewardship technology which is what controlled burnings are so yeah, um, and I think the follow-up question, you asked me, how do, I, how do I control that conversation or what do I do to influence maybe? There could be a lot of different readings from this. And yeah, I mean, I, you, you kind of spoke to it is, you know, the, your gallery sees something and it's like, I don't think so. And someone mm -hmm. else seems something, sees it and they're like, oh, this is, and they, you, said, you mentioned they wrote about it. So yeah, how do you feel about you're kind of like releasing this into the world and you have all these different interpretations? How do you do you want to try to control the narrative on that? Or what do you what are you thinking? I do feel like um 
it, it required me writing a, an artist statement. Like it required me taking control of, of a narrative instead of waiting for someone to write the perfect thing about what I do and why. So after I wrote uh, exactly what I'm trying to do and, and it included, uh, you know, like an, an educational section uh, about indigenous land stewardship technology. Um, that was when, like, I just kind of filled in the blanks for people, you know what I mean? And like, I, I enjoy doing that. Like, I enjoy that the work isn't, um, I'm not just doing this out of enjoyment, even though, of course it is, but it's an opportunity to, uh, to share good information, you know, like to, uh, to take part in this conversation about uh, what we've lost through this project of progress, right? That has put us in the situation that we're in. So when people first see the work and they have no idea about controlled burning, of course, like they think, oh my God, like you're painting wildfires, but they'll say like, oh, you're painting wildfires, but but there's something peaceful about them. I don't know why I, it doesn't feel scary to me. And then I explain there's this process called controlled burning, right? And like, I, I do want to, I suppose I influence that conversation through the use of like these very kind of soothing, like a soothing color palette. And the flames are never like wildly out of control. And there's always like greenery in it, you know? So it's this, this conversation where where the fire and the new growth is taking place on a single scene. May I ask? Yeah, I, 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 it's it's quick. I was just wondering whether the the decision of of the square format it's like uh, on purpose. Like I don't know. I was like thinking like all right, it's 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 a uh, a controlled burn, and and I don't know. I I think like a square is it's also like very very like cagey right like i don't know it's like but it's 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 something like that or or, or yes yes so yeah. i have done uh like the very first uh maybe three or four that i did they were like a traditional landscape format mm -hmm. and then the square just kind of came uh, like as a means of <clears throat> i i wanted to not talk about it as a landscape like I wanted to talk about it almost like the the metaphor like I wanted to talk about regeneration and um for for whatever reason like the square just felt it just felt good to me like there's something about knowing that you can fit a perfect circle inside of a square like I just that idea resonated with with what I was after okay thanks mm-hmm just wanted to show this one really quick. I the composition is really really nice in this, and I like mm -hmm. I, I like how the smoke dominates. Um, definitely, I would it would be awesome to see these in person. I'm in this one in particular. I'm seeing a little bit more of the purpley, mm -hmm. um, purpley areas. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Elsa.